All right, welcome back to the Double Play channel where I show you how you can put your money to work in two places at one time by leveraging the cash value of a maximum overfunded life insurance policy. If you've been searching the internet looking for information on how to use the cash value of a life insurance policy for real estate investing, you've come to the right place. So be sure to go down in the description right now, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you're notified whenever I come out with new videos. But today we're going to be talking about irrevocable life insurance trusts, ILITs. And this is important because this is a question I get all the time from many of my new clients. And they want to know how they should hold their policies if they should put it in a trust. And, you know, most real estate investors are naturally a little bit concerned about asset protection, as they should be. In this video, I want to discuss why you would want to consider using an irrevocable life insurance trust or whether or not you even need one. So if that sounds interesting, stick around after the intro and we'll break it down for you. All right, thanks for sticking around. I'm Tom Rutkowski with Innovative Retirement Strategies. I created this channel because I know how hard it can be to try and find information on the internet. You know, you find many websites where they give you nice fluffy graphics and want you to download something in exchange for an email address. And I like to provide as much information as I can. Um, the goal of my channel is to give you all of the information that you need without ever talking to a life insurance agent. In fact, the only time that you should ever need to talk to me is when you want to see an illustration. And in fact, I've got a link to request an illustration in the description down below. So check, be sure to check that out. And if you do have any questions that I don't address in the video, be sure to post them in the comments down below so that everybody can get the benefit of the response that I put down as to, the, to your questions. So, all right, today we're going to be talking about ILITs, Irrevocable Life Insurance Trusts, and do you need them for a policy that you, if you're planning on doing the double play? All right, so the way I'm gonna cover this, I just wanna, you know, real quickly cut to the chase and let you know whether or not you need to do a policy inside of an ILIT. Um, then I'm gonna move on and talk about life insurance trusts and why you would need one and how to use them. And then finally, I'm gonna close it up with a discussion on the pros and cons of using an irrevocable life insurance trust. Let me just take care of a couple of housekeeping items first. Um, the purpose of these videos is for education purposes only. There is no advice being offered, no tax advice, no legal advice, no financial advice. And also be aware that the primary purpose of life insurance is for the death benefit protection. Any other benefit is purely ancillary. All right, so let's begin by cutting to the chase. Most people don't need an islet. And especially if you're planning on using your policy's cash value for leveraging into real estate, then you definitely do not want to use uh, an irrevocable life insurance trust an islet. Well, the primary purpose of an islet is to reduce the tax costs of estate taxes on a person's estate. So if you think that you might be in a tax bracket or have a net worth that you might be subject to estate taxes, then you may want to consider having your life insurance be in a life insurance trust. But if you don't anticipate that being the problem and you want to be able to access the policy's cash values to leverage for real estate investing, then you definitely want to hold that policy in your own personal name. So. If you came here looking for the answer on whether or not you need to use an islet, um, you probably don't need to watch beyond this point. Um, you know, since an islet is primarily used to reduce the estate taxes on an estate, um, I'm going to spend the rest of this video talking about why you would want to use an islet, who would need to use one, um, a little bit more detail on trust. So if that's of interest to you, keep on watching. If not, I appreciate you tuning in. The purpose of an irrevocable life insurance trust or an islet is, is to reduce the tax cost of estate taxes on an estate. So 
the way that's done is, is by using an irrevocable life insurance trust. And since you may or may not know what a trust is, just understand that a, a trust is just an entity, just like a corporation or a business is, is an entity and it, it's afforded certain legal rights as an entity. So a, a trust is set up by having a lawyer draft some legal documents and basically that trust is, is an entity that can hold assets. So once you have a trust, you can purchase real estate in the name of that trust. You can open up brokerage accounts in the name of that trust. You can open up bank accounts in the name of that trust. So the trust is just an entity or a holding vehicle for assets. Now, an irrevocable trust means that once you've set it up, it's outside of your control. And for the purposes of, I don't want to say avoiding estate taxes, but reducing the tax costs of estate taxes on estate, anything that you, any assets that you move into an irrevocable trust are considered to be outside of the control of the estate. So outside the, uh, are outside of the estate. And since an irrevocable trust is outside of the control of the grantor, assets in, the, in an irrevocable trust are considered outside of the estate of the grantor. Now, a revocable trust offers much more flexibility, but the assets that would be inside of it are not outside the estate of the grantor. One thing that most people don't know about life insurance, too, is that the death benefit is considered part of the estate of the policy owner. So most people know that the, tax, the death benefit of life insurance policy is received tax-free by the beneficiary. But since most people aren't subject to estate taxes, they don't realize that the death benefit of the policy is part of the policy owner's estate because they own the policy at the time of their death. So it's those, the death benefit is usually included in the assets for the calculation of estate taxes. So this is one reason why you would want to move that policy into an irrevocable life insurance trust to get it outside of the estate. Now, it's also important to understand that when you gift assets to an estate, they're subject to gift tax rules, which are currently, as of uh, right now, it's July of 2022, um, you're allowed $16,000 per individual per year. Now, in the grand scheme of things, since the threshold for estate taxes is at $12,060,000, um, you know, getting $16,000 a year out of your estate, you know, isn't going to be a, a significant uh, amount. But because it's life insurance, that $16,000, if you were to pass, you know, could result in a very large and sizable death benefit that, that would have been part of the, the, the estate. And finally, it's, it's also important to understand that the rules are always changing. So I said, you know, you don't really need to have an islet unless you're, you think you're going to be subject to estate taxes. But it's important to understand that the rules are always changing. Um, right now, the exclusion for estate taxes is at $12,060,000 for an individual and $24,120,000 for a couple. But if Congress takes no action before 2025, um, that estate tax exemption is going to drop down to $5 million. The point being that this is always a moving target and you definitely want to, if you think you might be subject to estate taxes, you might want to try and plan accordingly. All right. And finally, in this last section, I just want to talk about the pros and cons of you setting up an islet. So some of the pros are that it will definitely lower the tax cost of estate taxes because you're moving assets out of the estate and the death benefit of the policy will be considered outside the estate. Um, it will lower the tax burden on the estate. Um, the second pro is that it offers better protection against creditors. So when I say better, um, a life insurance policy offers significant creditor protection, um, but not in every state. And there are times when people can get at the cash value or at the, the policy. But when a policy is held inside of a, an irrevocable trust, it's, it's literally outside of the estate. 
and creditors cannot get to it, you know, period. Um, the next pro would be that you can avoid public disclosure. So estates are public record. And if you don't want the public to know about your estate, you want to shift your assets into a trust so that everything is handled privately. And finally, um, this is both a pro and a con, is that funding is limited by gift tax rules, which is currently $16,000 per year. All right, and moving on to the cons. First off, setting up a trust is, is very expensive. You need to have lawyers involved, and it's, it's expensive to maintain because you need to have a trustee to manage the, the assets of the trust. And then more importantly is that you, you cannot modify the trust once it's been set up. That is the whole point behind the language, irrevocable trust. Um, third point, third, third con is that it's very complicated. You know, you want to make sure that the trust that you're setting up today is going to handle your needs going forward, given that it can't be changed or modified at any time in the future. You want your instructions to be followed to the letter and to make sure that you account for all possible outcomes, the documents can get fairly complicated. And finally, the, the funding, again, is limited to only $16,000. So again, if, if the, if the estate, exam, estate tax exemption is $12,060,000, then clearly getting, getting $16,000 a year out of it is not going to be a, it's not going to represent much more than a drop in the bucket. All right, so wrapping up, um, the main point of this presentation was just to address whether or not you need to set up an islet if you're planning on doing the double play, which is where most of my clients come from. Um, given that most people are not subject to estate tax rules, most people don't need to worry about an islet. And given that you can't access the cash values of a policy once you've set it up in an islet, um, you definitely don't want to use an islet when you're doing the double play. All right, so that's all I have on this topic. If you're hungry for more information and you don't want to talk to a life insurance agent yet, then I, I highly recommend going out to Facebook and joining my double play group there. There's a link down in the description down below. Um, go ahead and post your questions to the membership. Those are all people who are either researching this subject or actually doing it. And a lot of times they can answer your questions without you having to talk to a, a life insurance agent. Um, you know, if I've done my job right, these videos should be answering all of your questions. But if you do want to talk to me, there's a link to set up an appointment with me in, my, in the description. And if you enjoy getting all this content for free and you're finding value in it, please consider supporting me at Buy Me a Coffee. Uh, there's a link in the description down below for that as well. And your financial support gives me an incentive to keep on making these free videos for you. And also, if you want to Check out my website, innovativeretirementstrategies.com. You can find a ton of more resources, uh, eBooks that you can download, a store where you can purchase consulting time with me if you want to discuss your options. So with that, I'll see you in the next video.